If you're doing hand tool woodworking, you need a shooting board. Anytime you cross cut a piece of wood, you're going to have ragged grain, and the end will never be perfectly square. The shooting board can fix all these problems. It holds your plane perpendicular and guides it back and forth, taking thin shavings across that end grain until your piece is neatly trimmed and perfectly square. If you've never used one, it's amazing. And modern shooting boards just keep getting better. My shooting board is made from plywood and melamine, so it's always flat. It's got a replaceable fence and low friction plastic for the plane to ride on. There's even a detachable arm you can use to support long stock. And just the other day, I was using my fancy shooting board and I thought, wait a second, where the hell did this thing come from? I mean, not mine specifically, but all modern shooting boards are basically like this. They're made of plywood and particle board and they've got movable fences and tracks for the plane. And there is no way that traditional woodworkers used a shooting board like this. I mean, half of these materials didn't even exist just a few decades ago. So what did real, traditional woodworkers use for their shooting boards? Well, if you just look at the old books on woodworking, you can find out pretty fast. Traditional shooting boards are a lot simpler than the ones we're used to. They're just a few pieces of solid wood, usually nailed together. They're also much longer and skinnier than modern examples. Some of them are three feet long or more, which doesn't make much sense. I even found this one. Notice anything missing? There's no fence. There's nothing to hold the wood perpendicular while you trim the end grain. And that's because these shooting boards weren't meant for trimming end grain. They were made for trimming side grain. Early shooting boards were built by cabinet makers who needed to accurately joint the edges of thin pieces so they could glue up delicate panels for cabinet doors and other pieces of fine furniture. Planing long edges of thin stock is challenging in the vise. You're balancing the plane on a very small surface and trying to take a continuous cut while holding the tool perfectly level. You check your edge with the square and then you might have to joint the edge all over again. It's a whole process. The shooting board eliminates most of the variables. The plane is held perfectly flat and perpendicular to the work. And as you joint the edge, it's going to be square. The pre-industrial woodworker would have done this work with a wooden triplane, and that extra long sole would guarantee that the edge was also perfectly straight. With a little practice, this jig makes edge jointing thin stock idiot-proof. Early shooting boards like this one mostly weren't used for end grain, at least not very often. It isn't until the 1900s that authors start consistently referring to this as an end grain jig. And even once it starts being used for end grain, the way it's used is pretty different from a modern shooting board. When you're using this traditional style, the plane doesn't ride up against the track like this. It's always held out a distance, so it's not cutting into the side of the track and not chewing up your fence. That has a lot of implications for the way you work. If you want to trim a piece of end grain with this jig, well, the jig is gonna hold the plane flat and keep it level, but it's not gonna keep it going straight like a modern shooting board would. That's up to the craftsperson. So when you go to trim your end grain, you have to make sure that you're taking a straight cut and getting a true 90 degree end. Here's how it works. This piece of oak is ragged from the saw and it's badly out of square. I'll start by striking a line across that end. Having a reference is critical. As I put the stock on the shooting board, I let it overhang quite a bit and then I go to work with the plane. From this angle, you can see that I'm not taking full strokes. I start off taking short strokes on the corner closest to me because that's where the wood is higher. Once I've worked that down, the wood is a little bit high in the middle, and I can see that clearly because I have a reference line. So I work a little bit in the middle until the wood is mostly square, and I just need a few final strokes to clean it up. The wood isn't up against the fence, so I could blow out the back of that grain. To keep that from happening, I put a piece of scrap stock between my work and the fence. That scrap supports the end fibers while I take the last few full-length strokes. You might be thinking that this can't be as good as a modern shooting board, but look at the results. The end is perfect. So what's the real difference between these two designs? Well, the modern one 
kind of does everything for you. The plane is held perfectly flat and square, and it can only go back and forth in a straight line. The fence is perfectly perpendicular to the track, so you can only get a square edge. With this design, it, you're kind of a robot. You just move the plane back and forth, and the jig basically does everything for you. The classic shooting board, well, it just requires more skill to use. The track is going to hold your plane flat, but you have to control how straight it's going. You have to make sure you're getting that perfect perpendicular end. The jig isn't going to do it for you. With this design, you have to develop your skills, your eye-hand coordination, and your control over your tools. This one's going to make you a better craftsperson. The modern shooting board is also a lot harder to build. You have to get a bunch of fancy materials together, and this took me about a day to put together. The classic shooting board can be made from scrap wood you probably already have, and it's fast. In fact, let's build one right now. Building these old-style shooting boards is quick and simple. It's all solid wood, no fancy joints, and it doesn't have to be deadly accurate to work. I'm going to do the whole thing out of a single board of white pine. Most of the old books actually recommend white pine because of its cheapness and stability. Some things never change. You'll want clear stock, so pick a board with very few knots and don't use them in the final piece. Most of the books agree that your board should be around 30 inches long. This is just a 1x8 from the big box store. Once I cut away the knots, I'll have two 30-inch sections to make my board from. Building a shooting board out of solid wood is tricky. Any piece of solid wood is going to move with the seasons, and the wider the board is, the more it moves. Now, you can try to fix this problem by laminating two boards together like this, and that definitely helps, but it's no guarantee. Even two laminated pieces of solid wood still might twist and cup as the seasons change. So instead of this, we're going to use another traditional design. This design combines flat pieces of wood with cross-grain battens attached with nails or screws. The battens keep everything flat, and we can make the board from two relatively narrow pieces. No need to dig up super-wide stock. The widest piece of wood is called the stage, and this piece needs to be very flat for the shooting board to work. This board has cupped, so I'm planing away the sides until it's flat. You should expect your stock to be a little twisted. Most long boards twist a little bit as they dry, so I'm using winding sticks to find the high corners and work those down. Once I have one flat face, I'll set my marking gauge to my lowest corner and gauge that thickness all the way around the stock. Once I plane down to that line, my stage is perfectly flat. Next, I'll rip my other board into thinner sections to make the track for the plane to ride on, and the little parts, like the fence. The key to the whole design is these little battens. They're going to hold the wide pieces flat and allow us to set the track below the stage without having to make an extra thin piece of stock. Each batten is just a narrow stick with a step cut in one end. The sticks need to be very consistent, and I've clamped them together so I can plane them all to a consistent thickness. Then, I'm going to take my time laying out that little step. It's tempting to rush here, but you'll only regret it later on. We need five identical pieces, and that takes a little discipline. Cutting the steps is a lot like sawing a tenon. You can even clean them up right in the vise. For the final trim, I put them all in a hand screw clamp and work across the steps with a wide chisel. This makes it easy to get the steps flat and consistent. For the final assembly, I've pre-drilled all my parts, and I'm just screwing them together. I usually use an impact driver for running in fasteners, but that's a powerful tool, and if I over-torque some of these screws, I could pull the whole assembly into twist. Doing them by hand is tedious, but I'll be able to tighten them much more consistently. You might not need a fence for this design, but I sure want one, especially for end grain work. My fence is just an offcut from the track. I'm screwing down one end, then double-checking square and running in the rest of the screws. This fence doesn't need to be perfectly square to the track, but get it as close as you can. The completed board works exactly the way it should. Jointing the edges of thin stock is super easy. When I compare it to jointing in the vise, I kind of can't believe I got along without this type of shooting board for all these years. 
Jointing very delicate pieces like this one can be challenging because the pressure of the plane makes them flex. But Rob Cosman has a great tip for that. He just follows the plane with his fingertips to equalize the pressure. It's actually easy. And shooting that end grain is no big deal. You just back up your stock with a piece of waste, mark a line so you have something to aim for, and go to work. This is my first time shooting with this board, and I pick it up almost instantly. You have to watch more carefully and control the tool, but you can't argue with the results. So you need a shooting board. Which one should you build? Well, the modern, advanced shooting board is easy to use but more difficult to build. You need several different types of materials, a little bit of hardware, and it's going to take you at least a day to make. Now, we have a complete build video and a very detailed set of plans to guide you through the entire process. Most modern shooting boards made out of plywood and modern materials require you to use a table saw or some other power tool to get an accurate result, but ours is a complete hand tool build. We're going to guide you through the whole process and show you how to get a super accurate shooting board, even with hand tools, even if it's your first time. Now, on the other hand, you might want to make the traditional classic shooting board, which works really well, but it's a little bit more difficult to use and a lot easier to build. That's the trade-off. If you'd like to build something like this, well, it's just made out of scrap solid wood that you probably have in your shop, and it's going to take you about half as long as the more advanced version. If you'd like to build this, we just made a complete set of plans that will guide you through every step of the process, from stock selection all the way to truing up and making sure the final board is flat and square. All of my plans are always super affordable. You can click on the links down in the description or find them at rexkruger.com store. And before I wrap up here, I should mention that I made this video because of Mr. Graham Blackburn. He is an old-school British cabinet maker who wrote a bunch of books that I love, and I've followed him for years, but I, I had no idea he was still active. He's, he's not a young guy, but, well, just the other day, he popped up with a YouTube channel, and it's amazing. He's making super great videos, short, punchy, filled with information, and the man really really knows what he's talking about. I am delighted to see him making videos. And he made a video about a shooting board similar to this one, and it got me thinking, and it sent me off to my old books to do some research, and completely inspired this video. So I owe it all to him. You should go over to Graham's channel and subscribe, watch his video on the classic shooting board, and check out all the rest of his content. He's made a bunch of videos in a very short time, and they're really good. Just like always, these videos would never be possible without my patrons on Patreon. They've had the plans for this shooting board for free, and they've had them for a couple of years. They're going to get these plans for free, too. My patrons get all of my plans for free. If you'd like to get free plans and a bunch of other rewards, go on over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the rewards I have for the people who make this content possible. And I never want to forget my viewers, because I wouldn't be here without you. So thanks for watching.